So we're back onto the uh, N55 build. Uh, last we left off, I believe we've uh, done the ring gaps in the block. Ring gaps are done, so we're starting to assemble the block. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to go through uh, before we start the assembly. First thing is part of the block assembly. Is the installation of the piston oil spray nozzle okay um, I've gone ahead and installed all five is installed I've taken one out I wanted to show you the process of what I go through to set these piston nozzles and to make sure that they're in function in order so what we have we have the screw goes into here and then that gets put into here and torqued down a couple things this is a pressure relief valve okay so you want to make sure this is clear of any debris so two ways of doing that usually have a small screwdriver something that can release the ball on the inside of here to make sure that this got a resistance that you can feel this goes up and down so when the oil comes in this should relieve the ball on the seat of this pressure relief valve and allow the oil to spray into the pistons through the uh, through the nozzle right here so all comes in Pressurize oil. Once the pressure reaches a certain amount of PSI, it unseat the ball and allow the oil to get through through the nozzle to fuel to oil the piston. Okay. So I want to make sure I feel the same resistance, the same type of a resistance on all of these when I put them in. If one is a little bit hard or one is a little too soft as compared to the others, I'll replace it. Another thing that I do is that I I put some compressed air. And I make sure once I pressurize the air, the air comes out through of the four holes here, which is a mimicking of the oil pressure coming through. Okay. Once that's done, I just want to make sure. Spray compressed air through here, make sure this is all clear, there's no minor debris blocking inside there now we're all set to go we put this in and we torque it down now BMW's got a special tool that goes from here to align the angle of this nozzle I don't have that special tool so I just go according to a measurement off of the wall to the center of the nozzle and that's how I uh, set the nozzle and torque it down okay so that's the first step of our block assembly right around 12 newton meters Okay, that's all good. Next step of our assembly is uh, go ahead and install all the piston rings onto the piston. I've done all of these five already. I'm gonna go through a process of doing the last one of installing the piston rings uh, to just so I'll show you guys how I get this done, so. First thing we do, we put the all control ring on. Make sure this is nice and seated, doesn't overlap, and the, the butts, the two ends, uh, touch each other. Install our
lower control ring into the lower land. I just do it by hand. I don't use a... These rings are too small for a piston ring compressor. And I want to make sure that the I offset the gap from the gap. So you can see the yellow here. These are where the two uh, oil ring ends meets up. And say if I put that here, I offset that by putting my gap off to over here so there's no overlapping. Now, I'm going to put my other oil ring, but I'm going to put the gap on this side. I'm going to put my gaps 180 degree apart. We got one here outside of the wrist pin area. Other one will go 180 degree apart. Right there. One gap here. One gap here. And my two ends are sealed and it's outside of the wrist pin area. So that's our oil control ring. Our next ring is our lower or second compression ring and uh, this is top bottom's got this uh, scraper you guys can see it it's got a little recess here that allows to scrape the oil that uh, brings it back down whenever you take these apart you're gonna find that this area is just built up with carbon And you can see the markings on the ring should always go on top. We're going to offset this gap by the gap in the oil control ring. We're going to put that right over here and then number one will go 180 degree off. Okay, top compression ring. You guys can take, if you can see, it's very hard to see, but it's got markings right here. It says top, T-O-P, okay? Kind of difficult to see. Markings are going to go on top. We've got our ring gap here. Other one will go right here. 180 degree apart so this is installation of the compressor um, the compression rings so I've gone ahead and check the side clearances the side clearances on the between the piston groove and the ring with a feeler gauge I've done that on one through five I'm gonna go ahead and check this one here now got the pistons rings on We'll check our side clearance. We'll start with a 1000 feeler. One thousand is good. It's got a nice drag to it. First on top compression ring, that's good. We'll move it up to a thousand and a half, point zero zero one five. This is hard. I've got the feeler gauge in there, but I can't get the ring all the way in and the feeler stuck. So we know it's uh, 1, 000, uh, 0 0.0015 is too large for number one. 
And same thing for number two. So I got a 1000 uh, side clearance check on number one and two, which is within service limits. So that's good. All right, so we've got all the rings installed. All the side clearances check on the, all the rings to be within BMW acceptable specifications. Now I've, what I've done already is typically what I've done is each of the piston with the rod, the piston, the rings, and you can see below there, the connecting rod bearings. I've measured the combination of all the weights together. So rod, piston, rings, and bearings. And I've measured each one of them and to see the grams of weight. So you've gotta be within a certain grams of acceptable weight within each piston or the overall set within the um, the six pistons within the rotating assembly. I believe the spec is like you have to be within five grams. These these were within three grams as a set. So each rod, piston, rings, and bearings, connecting rod bearings, on all six was within three grams of each piston rod assembly. Okay. So next step here we are going to go ahead and install our we'll do a dry fitment of the crankshaft assembly with the lower bed plate and do a plastic gauge check on the crankshaft assembly so that will be able to give us our all clearance uh, measurement before we get started um, right now um, we're in building mode of this engine which means everything has to be absolutely clean so if you guys can see here I've got a HEPA filter going inside here so right now my HEPA filter tells me everything is clear I've got good air coming inside here um, the air inside here is clean to within maybe three microns or something like that so particles in the air is non-existent and that's what I want I don't want to have particles flying all over the place when I'm building an engine with putting in new bearings to have any type of uh, contaminants or particulates that's gonna stuck on the bearings and it's gonna get into the oil or get into the groove into the crankshaft or anything like that so during this time there is there is no in my area here there's no disassembly there's no tearing parts apart tearing cars apart tearing engines apart or nothing we're just in building mode once we've locked up the crankshaft and we've locked up the connecting rod bearings then we can um and i've got uh typically what i'll do i'll, I'll put a uh a towel or a sheet over the area or a plastic uh to minimize contaminants okay so let's get the uh, bearings installed and do our dry fit. All right, so we got the N55 crankshaft here. The crankshaft's already been measured. Uh, between the main bearings and the connecting rod bearings uh, 0 and 90 for taper and out of roundness uh, you guys can check out uh, the video uh, in, in, the, in, in the series here you'll be able to see uh, taking those measurements so the crankshafts dimensionally is good it's been polished and I've also blown out each of the holes to make sure air flow from each of the hole from the main bearings to the rod bearings that the airflow there's there's no blockage or anything in there so this crankshaft is ready to be installed okay
All right, so we've got the crankshaft installed, lower bearings installed, crankshaft installed. This is a dry fit to check the plastic gauge clearance. You can see I've got the plastic gauge set up on each of the journal, the green plastic gauge. This is gonna tell us uh, the clearance supposed to be, supposed to be a tighter clearance, so we're using the green plastic gauge. We've got our upper half installed on the bed plate. So we're gonna go ahead and install our bed plate and get our main bearings clearance. So we've got the uh, bolts just snug up. We're gonna go ahead and torque it down to 20 Newton meters and then 70 degrees in a crisscross pattern. There you have it. Just without doing a measurement check, all clearance looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and measure these out to get the exact measurement. But I think we should be good. All right, stay tuned for the next step.